Chem 2211, solid liquid extraction of trimeristin from nutmeg. We're going to be using ground nutmeg today. We'll be weighing out uh, four and a half grams. Take a look at our ground nutmeg there. Four and a half grams of uh, ground nutmeg. We'll be using methylene chloride as our solvent system. This is what we're going to use to extract the trimeristin from our ground nutmeg. We'll measure out 45 milliliters of this. We'll place it into our round bottom flask along with a couple of boiling chips. We're going to set our condenser, and in this case it will function as a reflux condenser. We'll set the condenser vertically, a little bit differently than what we did for our distillation, but we'll set this vertically so that as we heat the solution here on the bottom using our heating mantle, we'll vaporize, we'll move up into the condenser, hit the cooled condenser, and then condense back down into the flask. This will allow us to heat our methylene chloride to its boiling point, have it vaporize, but we won't lose any solvent volume overall. Let's go ahead and measure out our components. So we've teared out our balance here. We've got our whey paper folded into a boat shape, and we'll measure out four and a half grams of nutmeg. Okay, about halfway. Three point eight. Getting close. And there we go. So we measured out our uh, nutmeg. We're going to write this out on our data sheet. 4.507 grams. Next up, we're going to measure out the volume of our methylene chloride. That's going to be 45 milliliters. So we've measured out 45 mils of our methylene chloride. Methylene chloride is volatile, it is carcinogenic in nature, so we want to make sure that whenever we're measuring it out, or using it in any capacity that we're underneath our snorkel here, to make sure that we don't breathe in any fumes. So now that we have our liquid, our solvent system, we have our solid, our ground nutmeg, we're going to go ahead and put it into our round bottom flask. I'm going to use my powder funnel. I'll put my solid in first. bend my white paper in the center to make it a little bit easier. And then I'll tip it into the funnel. Now we've still got, I don't know if you can see, we've still got some residue in the funnel. That's one of the reasons that we do this first. I can tap it down, but then I'm also going to be pouring my methylene chloride in through the funnel. And that's going to rinse down. all that residue into the flask. Now all we've got to do is to add a couple of boiling chips. Move that out of the way for a second. These are calcium carbonate boiling chips. I'll put two stones in. We're all set. So we've got all of our materials into our round bottom flask. We've got our nutmeg and our methylene chloride and our boiling chips. So we're ready to assemble the apparatus itself. So for a reflux apparatus, we need a round bottom flask, a heating mantle, and a reflux condenser. We're going to 
put a little bit of grease around the lower edge of our condenser, just like we did previously for our distillation experiment. So we get a little of this vacuum grease, just a small amount. And that's just to make sure that we get a good tight seal. We don't want any of these vapors getting out and us inadvertently breathing them in. Now our flask is going to sit in our heating mantle. Our condenser will be clamped right in the center, just like so. And then we're going to fill our condenser with water using our water tubes, just like we did in our distillation experiment. One tube is connected directly to the faucet. This tube is our inlet, and that's going to go to the bottom. This is our inlet here. Our outlet will be at the top. And this tube will be placed into the drain. If we reverse these two hoses, if we were to inlet at the top, outlet at the bottom, we would not actually be able to fill the entire condenser with water. So let's go ahead and turn this on. And we're going to do this fairly slowly. We don't need a fast flow right here. We'll check the flow here at the sink. I'll turn it down just a little bit. That's a fairly good flow rate for us to have. We don't want a water hose to pop. That would be disastrous. Now that we have everything set up, we've got water in our condenser, we're ready to turn on our variac and start heating. We're gonna check back in once our reflux starts. So our variac has been turned on. We're running at a setting of six. It's been running for a couple of minutes now and we can see that we're boiling. Methylene chloride is a volatile, relatively volatile organic solvent system, so it boils fairly easily. We have obvious boiling in the flask, and if we zoom in and look at our condenser and our round bottom flask interface, we can see those vapors as they move up, they hit our cold water condenser, and then they're recondensing back down into the boiling flask. So this is the definition of reflux. We're boiling, we're vaporizing, we're recondensing inside the condenser, and then we're returning to the flask. So we're gonna let this boil for 30 minutes. Our reflux time starts once this reflux is witnessed. So we have 30 minutes, we'll check back in and see how we're doing. So our reflux has been going for roughly 30 minutes. We made a couple of modifications right at the beginning of the reflux. We've added a second clamp right to the interface between our reflux condenser and our round bottom flask just to give us added stability. We made sure that our snorkel was in place just in case any fumes got out of the top of the condenser setup. So this is going to be in place. It'll remain so while we're disassembling the uh, apparatus in just a few minutes. We also turned our variac down to about four and a half. We didn't need to be up at around six. It was boiling a little bit aggressively. We were seeing popping in the solution, so we wanted to stop that. So we turned it down a little bit. Now I'm gonna go ahead and turn it off. And I'm gonna drop heating mantle and we're going to let the system cool for a couple of minutes before we take it apart. Now that our apparatus is cooled off sufficiently we're going to go ahead and remove our round bottom flask very gently and we're going to hot filter our solid nutmeg that remains over our trimeristin has been extracted into our methylene chloride or organic solvent so we're gonna take this and do a gravity filtration to remove the solid nutmeg that remains and let the trimeristin and the methylene chloride flow through into the new 100 mil round bottom flask. Before we do so, we need to flute our filter paper. You remember this from our first experiment, recrystallization. So I'm gonna fold it in half. I'm gonna fold it into quarters. bend out one of the folds, and now I've got my nice cone shape. 
that I'll place into my flask. I'll swirl my solution and then pour it through. I'm going to do so in a couple of aliquots here. Let it drain through and I'm, the whole time I'm keeping this under my snorkel to make sure that I'm not breathing in any fumes. This will take three or four pours. We'll come back once everything has made it through the filtration. So we've finished pouring all of our liquid through our filtration setup here. As you can see, we have our solid nutmeg captured on our filter paper. And then if we look at our round bottom flask, we've got this golden yellow liquid that's come through. This is our methylene chloride and our trimeristin. We still have some residue in our original uh, reflux vessel. So I'm gonna use five mils of fresh methylene chloride to rinse it out. I'll pour this through our filtration setup. We'll wait for that to drain and then we'll be ready for our, our simple distillation. So our gravity filtration is finished. We've gotten all of our liquid through. We're left with just our solid, the residual nutmeg, in our filter paper. We'll go ahead and set that aside, and we're ready to take our round bottom flask with our methylene chloride over to our distillation apparatus. I'm gonna go ahead and set this in place for a moment so that we don't have any fumes leaking out. I'm going to get a couple of boiling chips. That we'll place inside of our boiling flask. Place it back on the distillation apparatus. lift our heating mantle into position. And now we're ready to distill. The purpose of this part of the experiment is simply to remove the methylene chloride from the solid trimeristin that we have dissolved in it. We use that to extract our methylene chloride, extracted the trimeristin out of the solid nutmeg. Now we want to remove our methylene chloride and we're going to catch it in our flask here, our 125 milliliter Erlenmeyer flask that is in an ice bath so that as that methylene chloride condenses and drips in, we don't have any of it volatilizing into the air. We're also going to move the snorkel into position so that just in case we get any fumes, they'll be evacuated quickly. We'll go ahead and turn our heating mantle on to about four and a half where we were for our reflux previously. We're gonna record the temperature of the first drop coming through our condenser, and then we'll let our solvent boil off. While we're waiting for our methylene chloride to start distilling over into our catch flask, I wanna draw your attention to a couple of things, reminding us of how our distillation apparatus has to be set up. We've got our distilling head firmly attached to our round bottom flask. We've greased the joint. We did this uh, prior to uh, bringing over our boiling flask. We have a grease joint here where our condenser meets our distillation flask. Our thermometer bulb is right at that T-junction here in our distilling head. We have our water flowing through our inlet on the downward side and going out our outlet on the upward side. And we're clamped at the middle of the condenser and at the ground glass joint between the distilling head and the round bottom flask. So we've just seen our first drop of distillate coming through our apparatus, and we're currently sitting at 35 degrees Celsius. We'll remove the remainder of our methylene chloride, then when we get to within one to two mils of finishing the distillation, we'll remove the heat and we'll go through the next part of our experiment. 
We've been distilling for about 10 to 15 minutes and we've already reduced its volume roughly in half. You'll notice looking here at our thermometer that we're holding steady at 39 degrees Celsius, which is the boiling point of methylene chloride. We've got about 10 more minutes to go and then we'll be ready to take this off and isolate our trimeristin product. So the methylene chloride has finished distilling off. We've still got one to two mils left in our boiling flask. We want to make sure that we never distill all the way to dryness in a distillation apparatus. We're going to drop the heating mantle and we're going to let the system cool down for a couple of minutes before we open it up, take our boiling chips out and cool this in an ice bath. Now that our apparatus is cooled down, we're going to go ahead and take it apart. I'm going to remove my boiling flask. And I also want to remove the boiling chips that we added before the distillation began. Because once we put this into our ice bath, we should see our trimeristins start to solidify and we don't want them to form on the boiling chips that we have to remove later. So we'll go ahead We'll do this under our snorkel, and we'll just gently fish them out, one at a time. Now we're ready to put our remaining liquid in our flask into our ice bath and allow it to solidify. So after just a minute in our ice bath, our trimeristin has solidified. What we're gonna do now is add 10 mils of acetone and break up any clumps with a glass rod. I've already measured out my 10 mils of acetone. I'll go ahead and pour this in. swirl this a little bit. As you can see, it's stuck to the side pretty good, so we'll use our glass rod to break it up. What we're doing here is washing out or washing our uh, trimeristin crystals with our acetone to remove any soluble impurities. So I'm just going to go through this and break apart any large clumps and we'll return it to the ice bath so it can continue to solidify. We'll let this sit in the ice bath for a few more minutes before we get our trimeristin isolated by a suction filtration. All right, so we have our trimeristin. We've broken up as many of the clumps as we can see as of right now, so we're going to go ahead and uh, isolate these crystals via suction filtration. First, I'm going to, we have our suction filtration apparatus already set up. We've got our hose to our vacuum line. We have our neoprene adapter in place so that we can form a suction. We have our filter paper already set up and ready to go. I'm going to use a small amount of acetone to wet our filter paper. We'll turn on our vacuum. Swirl our flask and pour it through. So we're getting a lot of our yellow or our golden color moving through the filter paper with our acetone. I'm going to use a little bit extra acetone on our flask. If we take a shot here, we can see that we've still got a number of large clumps that we need to collect. So I'll go ahead and add just a couple of mils of acetone here. Swirl the flask again. and then quickly upend it over the Buettner funnel.
Still got a little bit of residual left, so I'm going to do this again. Just a couple of syringes or a couple of pipettes of acetone to get any remaining trimeristin. And there we go. Still some residual, small amounts. That's always gonna happen when we're transferring from one flask into a filtration apparatus or into another flask. So that's something we wanna make note of on our data sheet as a possible source of error when we're calculating our percent recovery. We're gonna go ahead and let air pull through this system for a couple of minutes. Once it's dry, we'll scrape it out onto a uh, watch glass or onto, into a beaker and do another wash of acetone before we uh, refilter it again. We pulled air through our apparatus for a couple of minutes. We're ready to go ahead and collect our crystals. We'll go ahead and turn off our vacuum and we're going to scrape these crystals into a 100 mil beaker. We still see some discoloration. We've got some white crystals mixed in with some light orange or yellow patches. So we're going to go ahead and scrape those down. We're going to try and break apart some of those chunks and wash with another 10 mil aliquot of acetone. Going to try and get as much of this out as we possibly can. Again, just like with our transfer from the original flask, anything that we leave behind is a source of error when it comes to our percent recovery slash percent yield. We know that our nutmeg rhizome is 20 to 25 percent trimeristin, so we've got to factor in all of this information when we're doing our calculation a little bit later on. All right, so we have still a little bit of residual. But we managed to get the mass majority of it. Set this Butner funnel aside. I'm going to go through and try and chop up any of these chunks, especially the discolored chunks. That is evidence of an impurity. The more that we break these up, when we rinse them through with our acetone for a second time, the more likely we are to get back pure trimeristin product. Okay, I'm going to employ my glass rod here. See if I can't crush some of these larger chunks. Just want to get it into as fine a powder as we possibly can. That's going to make it that much easier to rinse out any impurities that are present. I think that looks pretty good. All right, here's our 10 mils of acetone. We'll go ahead and pour that in. We're gonna swirl this around, mix it up. I'll go through and once again use my glass stirring rod to pulverize any chunks that remain. I'm 
Remember to make note on your data sheet of any coloration changes, any colors that are noted in our crystalline product, and any color changes that result from the washings that we're doing now. That's going to be very important with your lab write up. All right, now I'm going to get a fresh Butner funnel and get our suction filtration set up once again, and we'll go ahead and filter our crystals. All right, we've set up a second suction filtration apparatus and we're ready to go. We've got our acetone and our trimeristin product. We're going to go ahead, we have our vacuum on, hose attached. We're going to go ahead and pour our crystals through. And we can see that this time around, much less to none of our yellow color. Small patches here and there, but we're going to take a couple of pipettes full of our acetone, rinse down our original flask here just to get out any residual. Swirl this flask a little bit and pour it through. One last pipette. We want to get as much out of this final flask as we possibly can because this is going to be our final crystal count. And there we go. We're going to let air pull through this five to six minutes to dry them out, dry the crystals out as well as we can. We will scrape the crystals out of the Butner funnel onto a pre-weighed watch glass, get our final weight of product, and then do a melting point determination. So while our crystals are drying on the Butner funnel, we're pulling air through them, I'm going to go ahead and weigh out our watch glass. This is what we're going to uh, scrape our final crystals onto. So we've teared our balance. We'll go ahead and put our watch glass down on the scale. We'll wait for it to settle. 47442. 47443 grams. Let's go over our data sheet real quick. We haven't looked at this in a little while. We had our starting weight of our nutmeg, 4.507 grams. 45 milliliters of methylene chloride used to extract our sample and reflux. 35 degrees was the first drop of our methylene chloride that was captured in our distillation setup. Our distillation was plateaued at 39 degrees, which makes sense. That's the boiling point of methylene chloride. So for the entire duration we were, we were uh, removing that methylene chloride, it was locked in at 39 degrees. We're about to get our final weight of crystals and our melting points. We wrote down our reflux time, approximately 30 minutes, indicated the Appearance of our nutmeg, light brown granular solid. The extraction solvent with our trimeristin was a golden yellow. Uh, we could also include transparent liquid here. First crystals isolated via suction filtration were yellow and white clumps. Second crystals that we've just recently uh, isolated through filtration are powdery white crystals. And we'll look at those again once we get to the point where we're weighing them out. So we'll go scrape those off and get them weighed. All right, so we'll go ahead and break our suction at the flask here, turn off our vacuum, and we're ready to isolate our crystals. We've got a few clumps in there with a yellowish tinge to them, but for the majority of these crystals, they're a nice powdery white, which is what we expect for trimeristin. I'm gonna go ahead and start scraping it down into the bottom of our Buechner funnel. break up some of these clumps as much as we can. We want to get this as dry as possible so that when we get to our melting point determination, we don't have any residual solvent. We 
got some crystals that got underneath our filter paper here as we're scraping it off, so we'll make sure we get those. There's a slight powdery residue that's almost impossible for us to retrieve, so we'll chalk that up to experimental error and we'll make a note of it on our data sheet. We'll get off any remaining large clumps from our filter paper. And we're all set. Let's go ahead and break apart some of the larger clumps as we did before. So we've got a nice powdery white crystalline product. We'll take it back over to our balance and get it weighed. So with our powder, we've got 48 141 grams. So after subtracting out the weight of our watch glass, we realize that we've gotten 0.698 grams of our trimeristin product. So you have to make sure that you calculate out your percent recovery based on a 20 to 25 percent composition of trimeristin per nutmeg rhizome. So make that calculation for your lab report. We're going to go ahead and take our crystals, load them into a capillary tube, and determine a melting point. All right, so we've gone ahead and made up our sample in our capillary here. We're ready for our melting point determination. I'm going to place it into the center lane. You can see it now in our uh, eyepiece. So our expected melting point range for pure trimeristin is 55 to 56 degrees Celsius. Therefore, we're going to do our start temperature at 40 degrees. We're going to have a ramp rate of 5 degrees per minute and a stop temperature of 75 degrees. We'll go ahead and start our preheat. Once our Digimelt is preheated, we'll start the melting point determination. All right, we're preheated to just at 40 degrees, so we're ready to go. We'll go ahead and hit start, and we'll see what our melting point range is. We're fully melted at around 56 degrees, saw our first signs of weeping at about 55.2, so we're spot on for our melting point determination. Looks like we isolated pure trimeristin. We'll go ahead and add that value to our data sheet and take a look at our final data collection for our write-up. All right, so after reviewing the tape, we see that our melting point range, we saw signs of weeping at 55.2 degrees Celsius, and our compound was fully melted at 56.4 degrees Celsius. So that's our melting point range for our isolated trimeristin. So we're going to use this value, we're going to use our total uh, crystal count here, total recovered crystal count, uh, to calculate our percent recovery. Good luck with your lab write-ups.